what's going man what's up and welcome back to another video we're going to have another reaction video today this one says disturbing office night ship horror story animated by imr scary tales the original video the original link for this video is going to be in the description so check that out if y'all want to watch the original video and i know i'm supposed to be having gaming coming out and the gaming is going to be coming back soon so just just bear with me i got some stuff i'm doing but the game is coming back soon. That's all I need to know. So let's go ahead and get into this one. My name's Brad, and I'm an accountant. Shout the most you, boring job in the world? Sure, on most days I would have agreed with you. But then I experienced things that I wouldn't wish on my worst of enemies. And it made me realize how happy I actually was by being a normal, boring accountant. I work for Auraguard, Aura a company Guard. specializing in something you wouldn't typically associate with debits and credits, feel-good stones. They claim yeah. these stones harness mystical energies, offering- Hey man, protect your energy, bro. Protect your aura, protect your energy. Watch out for all the, all the negative energy and bad energy out there. And protection against evil eyes and bad vibes. As for me, well, let's just happy. say I'm more of a numbers guy than a believer in mystical mumbo jumbo. Auraguard is a global enterprise marketing these stones with all the flair and persuasion of a top-notch sales team. Mm. You gotta give it to them. They it's know a how to sell a dream, to the right. but deep down, I can't help but view it all as a cleverly disguised multi-level marketing scheme. This nigga look like Clark the thing King. is, skepticism doesn't pay the bills, and in this economy, a job's a job. But then there was my colleague, <laughs> Rose. She was a firm believer in what we sold. Rose would often talk about the positive energy she felt from the stones, how they changed her life. Right. I admired her conviction, even if I didn't share it. But something changed in her over the past few weeks. She became distant, her usual vibrant self replaced by a somber shadow. I would catch her staring Ooh. blankly at her computer screen, lost in thought. Yeah, the spark in her eyes dimmed. Then last week, tragedy struck. Hey, how do y'all feel about all this, all the um spiritual stuff and you know spirituality? These people being more spiritual. How do y'all feel about that stuff? Um, are you, are you spiritual, religious, or is it just scientific, atheist? What, whatever one. What, what, what is your preferred choice of belief? Rose. The same Rose who was always Coming the first to arrive and the last it. to leave, who could brighten up the room with oh. a smile, took her own life. She jumped off our office Ooh. building, a fall that silenced her forever. The news was like a punch to the gut. Disbelief, grief, confusion. I felt it all. The office wasn't the same without her. Her so empty chair was a constant news. reminder of the life we'd lost. I never thought I'd miss her this much. In the wake of her passing, her workload was unceremoniously dumped onto my desk. Long hours became my new norm, Never staying back in the empty office, trying to make sense of her unfinished business. Oh, it was during one of these late nights, the clock ticking past midnight, that I stumbled upon something unexpected, Rose's journal. Hidden in a secret compartment of her desk, it was an ordinary looking leather bound book. But as I flipped through its pages, what I found was anything but ordinary. The initial entries were mundane, filled with everyday office activities, meetings, and deadlines. But then, something caught my eye. Entries that continued well after her death. Dates oh. that shouldn't have been there, written in Rose's unmistakable handwriting. My mind raced with questions. How was this possible? Was someone playing a cruel joke? Or was there something more sinister at play? Each new entry was a window into Rose's thoughts, but these thoughts were supposedly penned when she was no longer with us. It sent a shiver down my spine. Sitting there, alone in the dimly lit office, the atmosphere shifted. Why the air alone? grew colder, the Did silence heavier. I felt a chill run down my spine, an eerie sensation that I wasn't alone. The shadows in the corner seemed to dance and flicker in the faint light. I told myself it was just the fatigue, the stress of the situation playing tricks on my mind. With a deep breath, I closed the journal, deciding it was time for a coffee break. But as I locked up and stepped into the deserted hallway, a feeling of unease washed over me. 
The quiet was oppressive, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something or someone was watching me from the shadows. I quickened my pace to the coffee machine, and just for a second, I could see a shadow standing before it. It was impossible. Big ass, there was no one. Big bird. Yet the shadow on the wall was clear. Something invisible was obstructing the light. I changed my mind and rushed out to grab a quick smoke. But even as I stepped out into the cool night air, I couldn't help but glance back over my shoulder, half expecting to see a figure standing in the darkened windows of the office. The night was still, only the sounds of my footsteps echoing, and yet the feeling of being watched lingered. I called my boss, hoping he'd let me continue the work tomorrow, but he just woke up from his sleep, mumbled something grumpily, and cut the call. If my bonus didn't depend on impressing him, I would have rushed back home without care. The smoke calmed me down and I thought I must have been hallucinating, but the journal, with its posthumous entries, lay heavy on my mind. So, I picked it up again as soon as I ventured inside. Each entry was like a puzzle, a piece of a larger, more ominous picture that I was yet to fully comprehend. Initially, the journal entry seemed mundane, detailing Rose's daily routines and interactions at Oragard. But as I delved deeper, the tone shifted. There were cryptic references, subtle at first, then increasingly alarming. Rose wrote about the stones with a tone that oscillated between awe and fear, hinting at a truth far removed from the simple energy-boosting properties we marketed. As I was poring over these puzzling entries, then I noticed more shadows. This time, at least three. They seemed to flicker and move in the corner of my eye. Each time I looked directly at them, they were still, innocuous. But the moment my attention returned to the journal, they danced again. Then, the phone calls began. The first few were just anonymous callers hanging up as soon as I answered. I wrote them off, but then multiple phones started ringing. The silence of the phone breaking was jarring, and each time I answered, there was nothing but an eerie static, as if someone was there, listening, but not speaking. I tried to rationalize these occurrences. Stress, lack of sleep, the emotional toll of Rose's death. They were all plausible explanations for what I was experiencing. Yet, a part of me couldn't shake off the feeling that something truly unexplainable was happening. I took another coffee break, and this time I took Rose's journal with me. I flipped to the last entry she had written before her death. It was frantic, almost illegible, a stark contrast to her usually neat handwriting. I know too much. The stones, they're not what they seem. There's a darkness to them, an ancient energy that's not meant to be tampered with. I fear I've stirred something that should have remained hidden. Uh. Chills ran down my spine as I read her words. What had Rose discovered? What was this darkness she spoke of? As I contemplated her warning, the office lights flickered, casting an eerie glow. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I looked around the corridor, half expecting to see something emerge from the shadows. Just then, a phone rang, slicing through the silence. I hesitated, then picked it up. Static filled my ear, but this time amidst the crackling, I thought I heard a faint whisper, a voice so soft it was almost inaudible. I strained to listen, but for a moment, I felt that it was Rose, and then I heard... Chocolates and turnips. I hung up instantly and ran for my desk, my heart racing. The room felt colder, the shadows deeper. I'm saying by now, obviously this shit is haunted, and any normal sane person would assume that this place is haunted or is some extra shit going on. Would y'all stay or, or leave? and finish your would you stay and finish your work for your boss and leave because me personally bro i'm gonna leave i would have left as soon as i found rose journal on the floor under her shit i would have left because right there that's that's a red flag and off the first red flag i i clear it so this time i was assured that the shadows were watching me probably playing with me but chocolates and turnips i knew exactly what it was Rose, when alive, had an inside joke with the rest of the accounting staff, and this was her password. I knew then that I couldn't ignore what was happening. There was a mystery here, something dark and dangerous, and it was beckoning me. 
I had to know more. I had to understand what Rose had discovered, what had driven her to such despair that she jumped off the building. And so, I made a decision. I would delve deeper into the secrets of Oregard, into the true nature of the stones we sold. Little did I know this decision would lead me down a path from which there was no turning back. The more I dug, the more I realized that the stones we were selling were not mere trinkets of a multi-level marketing scheme, but something far more sinister. I put the password and logged into Rose's computer. There was a file named X, and I opened it to my shock. The accounts in Rose's folder grew darker and more desperate as they progressed. She had recorded videos of her having nightmares, shadowy figures moving in her apartment, and an overwhelming sense of dread that they followed her both in and out of sleep. Her words painted a picture of someone on the brink of a terrifying revelation. One particularly chilling entry caught my attention. Rose recorded a way to a hidden room within our office building, a place she believed held the key to understanding the true nature of the stones. Crazy. The thought of such a place within the confines of our mundane office building seemed ludicrous, she yet like something in her words rang true. Driven by a mix of fear and curiosity, I decided to search for this hidden room. It was a fool's errand, wandering the corridors of the office after hours, tapping on walls and looking for secret panels like a protagonist in a cliché mystery novel. But to my utter disbelief, I found it. Tucked away behind a seemingly innocuous bookshelf in the Founder's oh, old office crazy. was a small, a dimly like lit room. The air room. inside was stale thick with the dust of decades. The walls were lined with shelves holding various artifacts, ancient-looking stones, old books with indecipherable scripts, and disturbingly, photographs. The photographs were old, sepia-toned. They showed our company's founder, a man I had only seen in corporate portraits, in a very different light. He was pictured with a Native American tribe, his hands clasped around the stones that seemed eerily similar to the ones Oregard sold. The expression on the faces of the tribal members were not a friendship or partnership, but a fear and mistrust. I felt a deep unease settle in my stomach as I looked around the room. It was as if the very walls were imbued with a dark energy. I realized that Rose's fears were not unfounded. The stones were not just a part of a scam. They were something ancient, something that held a power we were not meant to meddle with. As I stood there, absorbing the gravity of my discovery, a sudden wave of dizziness overcame me. The room uh -oh. seemed to spin, seemed and for a sick. moment I thought I was going to faint. But it wasn't just a loss of balance. It was as if I was being pulled into a different time, a different realm. Suddenly, visions flashed before my eyes, disjointed and terrifying. I saw rituals, dark and ancient, the stones at their center. There were chants, sacrifices, and a sense of an overwhelming, malevolent presence being invoked. Amidst it all stood a figure, a dark, monstrous entity, its form barely discernible, yet its essence terrifyingly clear. I stumbled out of the room, gasping for air. The visions faded, but their imprint lingered in my mind. What I had seen was not of this world, not of this time. It was a glimpse into a past that we steeped in darkness and danger, a past that Oregard was directly tied to. Shaken, I realized the true depth of the abyss I was peering into. Rose had uncovered a secret so dark, so dangerous that it had cost her her life. And now, I too was entangled in its web. The encounter in the hidden room left me reeling. The visions I had experienced were not just mere hallucinations. They felt too real, too vivid to be products of my imagination. The more I thought about them, the more I realized that I had witnessed something ancient and malevolent, a dark secret that Oregard had buried deep within its foundations. I couldn't shake the- Look at this nigga, bro. Put some, put some, put some, some bifocals on him, bro. He's gonna look just like Clark Kent. Speaking, speaking of Clark Kent and Superman, though, it's so crazy that all that nigga did was he put on some glasses and, and a suit and tie and people was like, oh my God. There's no way this nigga's Superman. Like that's the dumbest thing in the world. Like, like imagine, imagine Kanye putting on some glasses and everybody was like, "Oh my God, where'd he go?" 
That shit would be crazy. We know what this nigga look like. Glass is not gonna make the nigga whatever, man. The images from my mind, me the sinister rituals, the chanting, the sacrifices. They were scenes from a forgotten past, yet they the felt ominously nice. relevant. The dark entity that appeared in my visions was particularly haunting. It was a formless shadow, yet its presence was overwhelmingly oppressive, exuding a sense of ancient evil and an unbridled malice. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw that dark, monstrous figure. It was as if the entity from my visions had escaped the confines of my mind and was now lurking in the corners of my reality. Shadows seemed to move with a life of their own, and the night got filled with strange, unsettling noises. But the burning need kept me from running away. To understand, to uncover the truth slower, behind Oregard and the stones it sold, Rose's like journal, the hidden room, the photographs, and the visions. They were pieces of a puzzle that I was determined to solve. I went back to Rose's research, delving into the history of Oregard and its founder. The more I read, the more the pieces began to fit together. The founder, Nicholas, had been a man of ambition and ruthlessness, obsessed with ancient rituals and the pursuit of forbidden knowledge. He had sought out the Native American tribe in the photographs, not as a friend, but as a conqueror, seeking to harness the power of the stones for his own purposes. The tribe had warned him of the dangers, of the dark energy that the stones contained, but he had not heeded their warnings. Instead, he had taken the stones, using them in unspeakable rituals that he had unleashed something terrible, something that should have remained hidden. As I pieced together the history, I began to understand the nature of the entity from my visions. It was a guardian of sorts, a dark protector of the stones' secrets. Its awakening was tied to the stones, to the rituals that the founder had performed. But why has it appeared to me now? Was it because of my probing into the company's dark past? Or was there something more, something that tied me to this ancient evil? The answer came unexpectedly. As I was going through more of Rose's journal entries, I stumbled upon a passage that sent chills down my spine. Rose had written about a prophecy, an ancient prediction that spoke of a reckoning, a time when the truth of the stones would be revealed and the entity would be unleashed. And then I found a new entry, which I was sure wasn't there half an hour ago, as if Rose wrote it when I was gone. You are the key. The key will save the world. I realized then that I was not just an accidental witness to these events. I was a part of them, a key player in a drama that had been unfolding for centuries. I was the one who was meant to uncover the truth, to face the darkness that Oregard had unleashed. And beside me, on Rose's desk, was placed her key, the one she believed warded off evil eye. My disbelief went for a toss long ago, so I grabbed it. Armed with this knowledge, I knew what I had to do. I had to face the entity, to confront the darkness that lurked in the shadows of Oregard. It was a terrifying prospect, okay. but it was the only way to end this nightmare. I see what As I steeled myself for the confrontation, I couldn't help but wonder if I was ready, if I had the strength to face the ancient evil that awaited me. You better hope so. This night was the longest of my life. The office was eerily quiet, the only sound my own ragged breathing and the occasional creak of the building settling. I could feel the presence of the entity, a larger shadow than the others, lurking and watching from the corners, a suffocating darkness that seemed to press in on me from all sides. As I made my way to the hidden room again, the air grew colder, the shadows deeper. I could sense the entity's malevolence, its anger at my intrusion. It was as if the very building was alive, aware of my intentions and determined to stop me. I opened the door to the hidden room, and there it was. The entity, a swirling mass of shadows, its form constantly do? shifting and changing. See. See. It was like nothing I had ever work. seen, a nightmare made real. Its presence was overwhelming, a tidal wave of darkness that threatened to engulf me. I stood there, frozen in fear, as the entity moved towards me. Its whispers filled the room, a cacophony of voices that were both terrifying and seductive. It spoke of power, of secrets, of the darkness that lay within all of us. But then, something unexpected happened. 
A new entry appeared in Rose's journal, the pages flipping open as if guided by an unseen hand. The entry was written in Rose's handwriting, but the words were meant for me. Use the key. It read, Say, Koala Ixapa. I didn't understand how or why, but I knew I had to trust Rose's words. I grabbed the key, feeling its energy pulsing in my hands. As the entity advanced, I held the key out in front of me, focusing all my will on it, and said Kihola Ixapa. The effect was immediate. The key glowed with a bright light, illuminating the room and pushing back the darkness. The entity howled in rage, its form flickering and wavering under the light. I could feel its power waning, its hold on the world weakening. With one final effort, I directed the energy of the key towards the entity, focusing on a shard of emerald that lay amongst them. The emerald glowed brightly, and then with a sound like a thunderclap, the entity was sucked into it, trapped within its crystalline depths. The room was suddenly quiet, the oppressive darkness gone. I was left standing there, shaking and exhausted, but alive. I had done it. I had faced the darkness and emerged victorious, but there was one last that. surprise waiting for me. As I turned to leave the room, I saw her, Rose's apparition, standing there smiling at me. She nodded, a gesture of gratitude and farewell, shit, and then boy. faded away. Her spirit was at peace, her mission complete. I knew then what I had to do. I had to finish what Rose had started. I had to expose Auragard's dark secrets to bring the truth to light. It wouldn't be easy, but I owed it to Rose, to the victims of the entity, That's to myself. Her. I left the office that night, the shard of emerald safely tucked away in my pocket. The night was still, the stars bright above. I felt a sense of purpose, a determination to see this through to the end. Oregard's days of exploiting the dark energies of the stones were over. I would make sure of it. Shit, well, <clears throat> that is it for this one. I hope that y'all enjoy. If y'all did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, share. Turn the post bell notifications on so you can see when I post. And like I said, stay tuned for the game. Man, it's coming back. I didn't forget about it and I didn't stop. It's coming soon. So just wait on it and... Peace, love, and positivity, and I will catch y'all in the next one, bro. It's two options in this world. Is you gonna win or lose? Is you gonna take the risk or not? You know you gotta choose. Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos.